All right, here we go. An entirely new unit. Um, for the next couple weeks, we're going to focus on rational expressions. Rational, coming from the word ratio. Ratio meaning fraction. So we are going to be studying in depth fractions, but from an Algebra 3, 4 perspective, where we're having fractions, but there's, you know, x, y's, and z's in the, uh, in the expressions and the equations and stuff. So let's just get that straight right off the bat. The new unit, rational, meaning fraction, and um, let's, start with a, let's start with an example. So that this first lesson is just, well, all we're going to do is we're going to give you one fraction. We're not going to add or multiply or any of these fractions together. It's just going to be, here's one fraction. It has one bar. There it is. So it is a just something over something. And it's pretty simple. All we're going to do is try to find things that are, on the t that are in the numerator and the denominator that match and then basically cancel them out or divide one by the other to make them go away. So to, if I want to, since this is the first example of this section, you know, let's go extra slow on this one. Okay, even though you might be able to do this a little faster, I'm going to do it extra slow so you really see what's going on here. So 32, the number 32, can be broken down. It's just a bunch of twos. So 32, and you can do this, you know, you can use your little division method over here. In fact, I'll do that for this one for you, just to remind you. And go over here. So, I mean, hopefully at this point you know that 32 is 5 twos. So I'm just going to write that out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Then we have x times x times y times z times z times z times z. All over 8, 2 times 2 times 2 x times x times z times z times z times z times z five of them when in doubt you could always do it this way you could always sit there and just break down and write it all out every single thing and then if you do it that way this problems like extra simple all we're doing now is anything that we see that's on the top and the bottom we can just cross out we see some z's that we can cross out. You know, there's a little x in here. We're going to do that right now. So I'm going to cross out some twos. I'm going to cross out some twos. Cross out some twos. And some x's. Uh, we got a z. This is going to be a little trickier here. I'm going to cross out a z with a z. A z with a z. Z, 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 z. We're just reducing fractions, just like we would if it was regular old numbers in there. We just happen to have some variables also. And then when we, we kind of focus on what we have left here, we have, uh, we have 2 times 2, so that's 4. Let's just write 4. We have an x and a y in the numerator. And then the denominator, we still have 1z left right there. So we just put over z. That's it. That's the first problem of the day here. That's the answer to it. How do we know we're done? because there's nothing that's common to the numerator and the denominator anymore that could get crossed out in any way. There's just all unique things. Next problem's even easier, but I'm trying to get a set up for what's to come. So, I mean, this problem is just four factors. You got two on the top, two on the bottom. Um, so it's not really a string of a bunch of individual little numbers and letters. It's just this thing, this thing, this thing, over this thing, this thing. And this problem is super simple. These match, so they go away. I guess if there's anything that's important to talk about here is that you can't, we can't cross out x's like this because this is, a, this is its own thing. This is a binomial in parentheses divided by another binomial. These have to stick together. We can't just pull out the x's and, and cross them out. So, final answer to this problem. The problem is people try to do more than they can here. The answer to this problem is just um, x 
is just uh, x minus 2 over x minus 3. That's it. Like I said, this problem's super easy, takes one second to do it, but there's something important to be talked about here. Don't do more than you can. So kind of stare at that one, make sure you understand that entire binomials that match can be crossed out like this, but you can't go in there and pick out just X's like that and cross those out. And here comes the meat of the lesson. I'm going to do two more examples for you, and this is really what it's, what it's all about. What we're going to do on these next two, we're going to look at the numerator. We're going to try to do whatever we can to that numerator involving factoring. Then we're going to try to factor the denominator. Then we'll have these individual pieces, and we'll hope that something might cross out there, and you know, like we saw in the last problem. But so really, there's nothing really that new here, all because we've been factoring like crazy for the last month or so. So here we go. This is a trinomial, the, the numerator right here, and we're going to assume it's going to factor. So we're going to write it as two binomials. We know we have to put a 3b here and a b here. So 3b times b equals 3b squared. We also know that this is a 2 here. We know we're going to have to have a 2 and a 1. Either 2, 1, or possibly flipped around the other way. Um, in fact, in this case, definitely flipped around the other way. Because if you look at this right now, we would have 3b and we'd have 2b. And there's no way that a 3b and a 2b can make a 7b. So we just get out our eraser. <coughs> which isn't working. So let's try this. It's not working either. Well, let's just do this. I can't seem to erase it. I'll just cross it out and we'll try again. Still with 3b and b, but this time I'm going to put the 2 and the 1 here. And you'll see that we have a 6 now on the outside and a 1 on the inside which can make a 7. And then the last thing is just focus on the signs. We need them both to be negative so that we create negative 7. And so the, top, the numerator is factored. So what used to be this, I've now written as this. You can check it if you want. You can pause the video and look at it, but definitely that's what that is. All right, so now we go to the denominator. The denominator is a little easier. It's definitely b and b, and it's just uh, you can just look at this one and just see. All right, what mul since there's no number here, we just say what multiplies to make ten that could somehow add up to a three, and we know that that's a five and a two, and we need it to be positive three, so we need the bigger number to be positive and the smaller number negative. And then what makes these fun is that you can see that there's a b minus two in the numerator and the denominator that match. They have to match perfectly. If this was b minus 2 and this was b plus 2, we'd be done with this problem. We would not be able to cross anything out. But in this case, these are gone. And your final answer is, rewrite it. Oops, again. I don't want, I want white. Uh, 3b minus 1 over b plus 5. Don't really need the parentheses anymore. Um, those parentheses that were here were because it was multiplied by another thing. Now that it's just this one thing in the numerator and one thing in the denominator, we can just remove the parentheses. It looks a little prettier that way. And there's our answer. All right, one more. Here we go. Same thing, same idea. I just kind of made it a little messier so we could, you know, look at some different things. It's not as bad as it looks because the denominator, all those are divisible by 4. So we'll factor out a 4 when we get to that part. This one though, we got to deal with it. It's going to be, we know it's something like this. It's got to be 5n and n. There's no, no way around that. It's five, that's the only way to make 5n squared. We need, we need these two numbers here to multiply to make 10 which, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is 5 and 2. It could be 10 and 1. You'll notice if I put 
Um, if I put a 10 here and a 1 here, I'll get that 50 and 1, which can create the 49. So I'm just going to go straight to that. I think we've done enough factoring. I, don't, I can go a little quicker for you now on that. But you can always pause it, think about it, slow it down. Um, but it shouldn't be that big a deal at this point. You can see that that's going to be 50. That's going to be 1. Obviously, 1 times 10 was 10. And the last thing is we need negative 49. So for negative 49, we need negative 50, positive 1. We're not solving any equations here. We're just simplifying problems. So we're just trying to make them look better. So we, the numerator is factored. Now we go to the denominator. The, the golden rule of factoring is check, always check to see if there's anything common to all the terms of the thing you're trying to factor. In this case, we can see there's a 4. So the first thing we're going to do here is just write 4, parentheses, n squared minus 12n plus 20. Always make life easier when you do that. And, you know, we're going to rewrite sometimes in these. Be patient. I, I rewrote, I'm going to rewrite this entire problem now because I didn't quite finish what I wanted to do down here. So my next step, I'm just going to quickly rewrite 5n plus 1, n minus 10. And then the bottom, the denominator, I'm going to write the 4. And now I'm going to factor, now I'm factoring this thing. Okay. And, um, so you got to think about numbers. Well, let's, let's get the n's out of the way. So we got n, n makes n squared. And all we need to do is think about what kind of numbers will multiply to 20 that could make a 12. And once again, I'm going to save us all the trouble of sitting here and guessing. And, you know, it should be pretty obvious. It's going to be 2 and 10. 2 times 10 makes 20. But we need them to add up to negative 12. So we're going to put two negatives in there. And if you want to double check that, pause it, whatever you need to do. But you can see that negative 2 times negative 10 is positive 20. And this is negative 10n and negative 2n, which makes negative 12n. So this equals that. This one equals that. The 4 we factored out of here. It's right here. You can't get rid of it. It's just sitting there hanging out. Final step find anything that's the same in the numerator and denominator, make them go away. That's the whole beauty of this, this thing. And then we're left with, we rewrite our final answer, 5n plus 1 over 4n minus 2. Something like that. This first lesson for the unit, pretty simple. I think these problems pretty much summarize what you're going to see in the, in the homework. Um, but we got a long way to go from here. This is just, the goal here was we were, you're given just one fraction and you've got to factor the numerator and the denominator, see if anything matches, cross them out, rewrite the problem in a simplified form. I'm going to do that over and over. Um, as we move along, we're going to start multiplying. We're going to have something like this times another one over here. We're going to add fractions. We're going to solve equations with fractions in them, but just getting started. So good luck with the homework, work hard, be nice, see you soon.